What is going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of ENA We Got Time. As always, I'm your host, Alex. Here with another episode. Um, yeah, on the road to 32. I think that's what I call it. Yeah, the road to 32. We're trying to get, you know what I'm saying, a fan, you know, somebody to come up and speak for every team. This week, uh, we have the very first lady on here. Big, big Seattle fan. You know what I'm saying? She has her own podcast. You can check it out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Really good. Check her out. We got Nay in the building, and I'm about to bring her up right now to introduce herself. What's up, Nay? Hi. Hi, everybody. I am Big Nay. Um, if most of you guys know, I am the voice of 12 Shades of Nay, the podcast that's on Apple and Spotify. I'm just starting that. Um, so I'm about a month and a half, maybe two months, I think, into that. So it's going well. Um, and I'm happy to be here, Alex. So thank you for inviting me. Okay, the pleasure is all mine. So uh, we can get into the first question. Um, how do you, how'd your fandom start? Like, is there some crazy story or you just, you know, you just from there? Um, I say a lot of different things, but I think what it boils down to at the end of the day is I was kind of just born into this. Um, and I think it, a lot does play a part from being like, I'm so, I was born and raised and I'm, I think I'm really just so Seattle. Um, but if it was like a particular moment that stuck out to me, I think, um, cause I was there, I was old enough to understand Matt Hasselbeck. Um, but we were sucky then. So I didn't go to a lot of the games. I was, I did go to one kingdom game, but I was not like old enough to understand or anything. I think within the next year it got torn down, um, but 2009, 2010, when we got Marshawn Lynch and when we got Pete Carroll um, is kind of when my fandom for Seattle really started amping up when I was really able to understand football. Um, so that was around my 2009, I want to say eighth grade-ish year. Um, I think maybe six, somewhere around there. My math sounds kind of off, but um, it's kind of when I became a big fan and just really been tuned in and locked in ever since and writing it out. So, yeah. Well, uh, your thoughts on the season? Um, I I speak to you kind of frequently. I I see podcasts and on Twitter and stuff. Uh, you expect y'all to make the playoffs? I believe. You know, I think y'all had a good enough team. But everything looked good. Um, just give me your thoughts on the season overall. Kind of dive a little bit deeper um, as we go. Um, my thoughts on the season. If I'm being honest and biasy aside, I, I feel like we had the season we deserved, um, if that makes sense. I feel like with how everything played out, um, especially towards the back half and towards the back end, it was more deserving. Like, I don't feel like looking at the season as a whole, playing how we played in the games that we lost that we shouldn't have lost. When I look at it as a whole, we really did have the season we deserved. Um, and us not making it to playoffs was because we sh did not – need to we like we lost games that we dropped games that we shouldn't have um we won games that no one expected us to like a lot of things i felt like were kind of backwards um and there was of course a lot of ups and downs and rocky roads um throughout the season so looking my thoughts looking back i just i feel like because honestly and if i honestly look at it this season and last season were very much the same season for us very much comparable in a lot of ways we were wishing um, for the playoffs, the only difference is this time we didn't get in, but our hopes were pretty much based off what was, I think, Green Bay either losing um, would have got us in. And the year before that, it was the Lions winning got us in. So they won and we got in. The Packers won, so we did not get in. But it was like if we wouldn't have dropped the ball on a couple of games, I feel like especially like a couple of divisional games, I think we were, what, two and six in the divisional games? We lost twice to San Fran. We lost twice to the Rams, which was unexpected to me. Um, so just going two and six in divisional, I think that alone um, kind of set us back in a lot more ways than so. So I feel like to wrap it up and put a cherry on it, I think we had this, this, the season we deserved. Yeah. I, I, like, I like the explanation. Um, so obviously, like I said, y'all didn't make the playoffs as expected. But there were some bright spots in there. Who were some guys, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, that you looked at and you were like, hmm, things may not be looking good right now, but next year he's going to be a good piece. Or, you know, I like what we're seeing from him. I'm glad we got him. Like, what, what's some of the good stuff to take away from this? Season? So. 
some good things from last season. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Cause there were individually a lot of good moments. Um, I think last season Bobo had a breakout year for us. He wasn't no puka or anything, um, but he did come out kind of swinging, especially in preseason. I think he kind of proved himself. Um, and then also when it came down to it in a couple of games this season, Bobo had a lot of those like plays that we need when we needed a wide receiver to come through. Sometimes it was DK and, you know, you're expected like lock it and things like that. But a lot of times um, it was Bobo. I mean, and a lot of times it was also the rookie that we got JSN. Um, I mean, I was so excited and happy that we got him when we got him off the board uh, because I just know as a football girl, Ohio State produces really good wide receivers. Like their their wide receiver room is just yeah, they, they only um they like they hit it on the nail every time. So when we did get him where we got him, I was not mad at it. I was not upset. Um now through the season with him, it was more so I think. He had the breakout season, I think, for me that I wanted him to have. It was more so everybody else expected him to do so much more, um, I would say, especially. And I want to say it was some mess ups with them not knowing how to use him, I think, was a big thing for JSN. If they knew how to use him and knew how to really work him more with DK and Tyler in the middle of the field, he was always on the outside of the field and a lot of the stuff that he – and a lot of the routes he ran um, – which was disappointing because he didn't – they didn't know how to use him on the outside, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, but towards the end, he did have a lot of breakout plays. He started getting more touchdowns. He had, like, game-winning touchdowns, things like that. So I feel like it started to get, like, more in the works. Um, and hopefully this season we get to see more of that, especially with – I know Bobo is coming back. I believe Jason obviously is coming back. Um, so those players played up to my expectations. DK is going to DK. Lock is going to lock it all the time. Um I will say mm, Gino did not play up to my expectations. He played well, but he did not exceed my expectations. Um, I think going into last season, I was like, oh, yeah, Gino, he's not going to do what he did last year with break, wrecking, breaking things, but he's going to play up to it, if not close. Yeah. <laughs> it was so-so. Um a lot of fumbles. I feel like it was a lot of sacks. He's great with his quick release and all that, but I just feel like – and a lot of the games definitely weren't on Geno. It wasn't his fault. You can't lose the game by yourself as a quarterback. Um, so with that, it's like – I feel like he did what he did, and he did the best of his abilities with us having an unhealthy O-line, just wide receivers sometimes being out, just play calling, just a whole bunch of different things that play into that per se. Um, but I think I'm really going to stick with like Bobo and JSN. Our wide receivers kind of really came out swinging. Oh my gosh. Mafe had, um, he was going on a good, a good streak um, with his seven consecutive sacks. And I forgot which game it was, but that ended swiftly inefficiently. Um, but he was having a good little run and then, and then it came to a close. So yeah, those are my yeah. good players. So love, I know that I, I was back. I was about to say I know there's got to be like at least one. Yeah, yeah, Mafe. I think defense. No, I'm lying through my teeth. This is Witherspoon. Um, for me, defensively, um, had had the best best breakout season. I don't know why it took me so long to even for him to come to my brain. Um, but Witherspoon, Witherspoon. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. I think did it for me. I, of course, as a Seahawk fan, as football girl, I feel like he was a little snubbed for rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. Just when you look at everything as a whole, comparisons as a whole, number wise, I just feel like Witherspoon's production wise was just a little bit more up there. So yeah, Bobo, JSM, our rookies, Bobo, JSM, Witherspoon, um, and Mafe are my four, two offensive, two defensive. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so, right, you know, sounds like had a good rookie class. If you can follow that up. Yeah. Uh, draft. Who who would you like in the draft? Um, by the time this was dropped, it will probably be over. So let's see if you do like Nostradamus stuff and, and predict. Uh, but if you want, you can just say like what position uh, you think y'all need, or is that like specific, specific guys? Then you can say them. I want quarterback from Washington. I want Penix on the Giants. But yeah, if there's you no know, players' positions, you uh you think y'all need to uh, let everybody. Some players specifically, 
that I was looking for in the draft. And of course I watched every day. Um, but I think I more so paid attention to what I feel like the Seahawks need, which is um, obviously a QB, offensive lineman, and defensive lineman, and um, like edge rushers and stuff. Like, and now obviously safeties because we just let our safeties go. So, um, but now there's just now I have to go look back to the the safety combine day and really pay attention um, for real. So, but some what I was paying attention to, I doubt this is going to happen. Um, I do want us to obviously get a QB. I feel like if we don't get one this year, we're kind of just going to be setting ourselves back just a little bit more, um, especially with Mike McDonald being his first, the whole house being their first years as NFL staff coaching. Um, this Everybody's learning a new system um, pretty much. So I doubt this is going to happen, but what I feel like, and I was kind of just talking to myself about this for my podcast, um, I feel like as a good QB fit, I don't feel like he'll drop to 16 I don't think he's in the top five combine wise. I feel like his his draft stock went up just a little bit, not enough, but I don't feel like it's low enough where he'll be there at 16. So yeah, Michael Penix. Um, I really do want that man. I really do. I really do. I really do want him because it only, I feel like it just, the puzzle fits. His little puzzle piece fits in the equation. Why not? We have Ryan Grubb, who was Washington's OC. Just take your quarterback, learn, put him under your system that we already know. And then we have Mike, who's the first year. Um, and then when you kind of look at how Michael was maneuvering and handling stuff in Washington, it's very equivalent to how Seattle kind of runs play, but also kind of sets us back because Seattle was running that style of play under Pete Carroll. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the outside runs, outside routes, 12 personnel, um, deep throws, quick release, like all that stuff. Yeah, we see Michael Penix doing that, too, in the same breath, but Seattle was running that um, under Pete, not under Mike. But I feel like it, it couldn't be too far off. Um, so, QB-wise, I was really – I really want him. I doubt it's going to happen. And, and then also, a lot of people are talking about – well, a lot of my Seahawks friends are wishing on a star for Jake May. I don't think he's going past five, personally. Um, just me, be me. I don't think he's gonna no. make at least make it to 16. He's not gonna be there for us to snag or grab. Um, so I'm not too worried. I do like him as a player. Um, yeah, and then there's also some I'm arguing with some people about JJ McCarthy, but that's for another day. I feel like he's very much owned to the Giants right now. Um, so yeah, for me personally, Seahawk wise, if we don't sneak a quarterback in like the third or fourth round if we're talking pros like top prospect wise i want michael Penix um for qbs and if we go like well what what is i was just researching it for defensive it was i doubt i doubt i doubt actually i don't doubt because i my, when i w- reach on a star when i'm wishing on a star lately in football terms they've been coming true um so like i want to laundry sway okay yeah. I want to run this way. I feel like I feel like it fits. Um, just with who we have when we look at um, I hope, I hope he's his injury is working well. I'm not working well. I hope his he's able to come back by next season. So like Nuosu, I'm kind of looking at people who pair well with like Nuosu and Bobby. Hopefully he comes back for another year. Um and Reek and Spoon. Like when I look at all those puzzles, I feel like Tavondre Sweat would fit in there perfectly. I feel like Byron Murphy. Um, what kind of fit in there perfectly. And then there's like, who was it? He's from Washington. There's one, I can't, I can't pronounce his name correctly. It always, it's Ula, Ulo Foscio, I think is his last name. Oh, body name. <laughs> yeah, I want to say, it's, I want to say it's Edifuan Ulo Foscio, I think. Oh my gosh, if I'm butchering his name, but he's from Washington. He's a, he's a defensive lineman. And he, but he had an amazing combine, um, combine out. Yeah. So that's defensively at a QB defense. Oh, offensively, of course. I don't know why it's just working out like this, as in terms of Washington people. Maybe it's because I'm a Washington girl. <laughs> um, Roger from, he's an offensive lineman. He had the fastest NFL combine time for O my men. Um, and the way he was moving and grooving throughout the time, throughout the combine footwork, everything, I feel like we need some offensive linemen, especially because last season we played with like half of our offensive line was unhealthy. Lucas was hurt. Cross was hurt half the season. Just pieces like that, big pieces that 
will help Gino stay safe and not get sacked so much, we're gone. Um, and that played a big part, I feel like. So having someone like Roger in there would be amazing. Um, I was talking about Troy um, Fatanu also, um, and I was watching his combine. But the way he moves, I feel like instead of being a guard or offensive line, well, yeah, not on the physical line, but he looked like he could be a tight end for real. Um, but that's another like, you know, so I was looking at him offensively, but you could put him in like two different places. I feel like the guard, you could, he's, you know, maybe, um, but yeah, those are some, those are some big players for me in the draft to wrap it up. <laughs> now look, we got to address the elephant. Uh, I don't know what he was at USC, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Give me yeah. Thoughts on you know him leaving and all that. You know he was going to the front office and then I think they going maybe take another job. Just what do you think about you know Pete Carroll? Um, honestly, as sad as I am, because when I became a fan is when he became our head coach. So I was really through the Pete Carroll era. So when I take my emotions out of it, I think it timing was right. Um, and that it was due. It's been 14 seasons, and we've seen how production played out. Um, I feel like he did – he took this team as far as he could. I feel like the last two seasons, especially after losing Russell, you could see, like, he's losing players in the locker room, especially with the young players that are coming up in today's day. If you aren't able to have that control, you don't have that control over your team. Um, and everybody knows Pete Carroll is an amazing coach, and he really has his hands in his players, but sometimes you can't really control that situation. Um, so I feel like, I feel like it was due time, 14 seasons. We went to what, three, two, two Super Bowls under him. We went to two Super Bowls, one, one. Okay. We had, we're still under Pete Carroll. We, yeah, even on, not, not without them, but with them, we're still like over, I think we are over San Fran with like NFC divisional titles and things like that. So it, I, it was pretty with him. It was, it was, he had a great run. A great run, but I think a lot of the fans expect and me started to see that a lot of people were calling for his job. Um, just with a lot of things, it was due time. He's one of the oldest coaches in the NFL, so um, on a bill, all but he older than Bill, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, like yeah, and I think that plays a part. So it's like, and he's been doing this for 14 seasons. So at some point, Pete, you got to just step back and see big and then go be a family man. Like, um, especially because he's all in Seattle. I'll be seeing him at his grandkids, like basketball games at like the Vista and Boys and Girls Club. So I think it's time for him to start stepping more into that role. Him definitely hanging around in the front office and being around will still play a part with his veteran skills and coaching skills. And you can still learn from him. Um, but I think him passing the torch to Mike was definitely um, needed in, in some. So, yeah, but still having his knowledge in the building will still like play a good role. So I think it was due time. It was it was calling for it. Just had to. It just had to happen for us to if we really want to rebuild. The best way to put it, if we really want to rebuild and really want to go in this new direction, we really did have to clear the house, like sweep the house from head to toe. So, yeah. Good four teams, like you said, one one a Super Bowl, one to another one. I mean that a lot of a lot of teams don't get to say that in longer times than that. But um is there anybody you wanna reach? I I listened to your podcast last when you dropped, and you know that safety you were a little bit questionable about. He has since been released from this. Um is there anybody else you would like gone or is there somebody who is a free agent that you might come back. What's your thoughts on that? Oh yes, okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, so people I want to re-sign. Um, I feel like it's kind of been working out how I thought it would play out. Um, re I wanted to re-sign Quandre. Some people didn't. I was. I wasn't really behind that release. Um, but I feel like with them really seeing him that kind of says something draft wise, like maybe we are going to go after safeties or things like that. Um, but so I wanted to resign him. I want to resign Noah Fant, um, mm -hmm. kind of dipping into free agency. I want to resign Noah Fant. I want to resign 
Kobe Parkinson, which is another tight end that we had. Um, and I don't like, I don't want to resign them for too much because I feel like we could still find some good tight ends. There were, I paid attention a little bit um to the tight end day. So I feel like there's a there's a good enough room for us to go dive in there and pick some people from there. So re-signing Kobe and Noah, like whether we have to restruct, well, Noah's good because he came in the Broncos trade. So kind of like just re constructing it, his contract a bit. Um, I feel like Kobe will be just fine. So re-signing him. Um, obviously there's been talks about, um, DK leaving. He's not going anywhere in my mind. He's not leaving. He's not leaving. He's not, I don't think he's leaving, especially with how things are playing out right now and the pieces of the puzzle. I don't think he's going to, he's going to go anywhere. So re-sign DK, obviously, um, because of cap this, there's this rumor. I want to re-sign Tyler, but I feel like that's me being a, a biased Seahawk girl. Like just genuinely, I love Tyler in in Seahawk production. I genuinely cannot see him in nobody else's uniform. Um, but if it happens, it happens. Uh, so I would like to re-sign Tyler, re-sign DK. Defensively, I want to re-sign Bobby. Um, I think we already extended Nwosu, so he's good. It's just about reworking his injuries. Um, I want to keep Mafe. Um, uh, yeah, obviously. Leonard, not Leonard. It is. It's it's the exit. Leonard Williams, big cat. I want to re-sign him because I feel like it's a he's a for us to trade him for a, I what was it a second round draft pick and like a fifth round draft pick or something. Obviously, they see him as valuable when he came in. The, he only came in the back half of our season, so it's not like we got to see so much of how he did. But he did have some big plays under us. Um, so I want to re-sign him, to make, reconstruct him, and see how we could do that. I don't know if he's asking for a big prize. I feel like he's worth a big prize. But with the direction the Seahawks are going, maybe we can kind of pitter-patter just a little bit um, and see if he could, if he's okay with it, take a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, but I really do want to re-sign him because I just I feel like defensively we need that oomph back. Like, yeah, we're we could get close to LB, never gonna be that again. Um, but I see definitely I see some pieces already like on the field production wise that can get us close. And hopefully with the right staffing and coaching that we have now, it will really like a light will come on for us. So, yeah. And then also uh, I heard you, you know, you say you really want that guy in Baltimore, uh, Patrick Queen. Um, yeah. And somebody else in uh, free agency. I know he's high on your list. Yes. Yeah. Um, who else is high on my list? I was snag. Um, and what's crazy is I don't think I've paid I've paid attention, but not too much attention, um, to other teams' free agency until they just started coming out with everybody like dropping trades and who's being released and stuff like that. So now I've been really deep diving it. But earlier for me, it was more so Ravens talk because I only felt like if Mike left and defensively. What he did, I only felt like it makes sense for players to follow, whether it's PQ, Geno Stone. Um, and I know it's not gonna be Roquan, so just things he's not leaving, but just little things like that. We took we took Mike and made him a Seahawk. We took their assistant, their LB coach, I think, and he's now our assistant LB coach. I just feel like pieces align, so I'm gonna say yes, Patrick Queen is high on my list. And very much if we could. I don't want to cut Jordan, but if we could lower his price just a little bit and go get Patrick, it might work out. And then Bobby worked. So we're good. I'm not mad at it. Um, and then who else was I looking at? So it was Queen Stone. Um, I don't think he's too bad of a pick to go after. Oh, my gosh. There was somebody else that just got released from the Broncos. Um, and I was like, oh, we got to go get him. We got to go. He's a safety. Um, yes. From, yes, he they just released him and everybody at my my Seahawks friends are like, oh, he's too he's too high of a, a price to go get that that's fine. Um we could go get him. We just released two safeties. I'm not too mad at the Jamal release. I called it, I knew it was coming. Um I I I people are gonna fight me, they might not. I called him a liability, um, just just because of you know, the man can never stay on the field, it's just damn money. So I we gotta let him go, no matter how he plays. When he is on the field, the man gets hurt. So yeah, um, I called that one. We released Quandre. I was not expecting that. We released the tight end. Um, so I feel like 
yeah, now I have to really go lock in and see like who I want in this free agency as as things come out. But yeah, yeah those are a couple of people that I have. Now, the last topic and probably the most important topic. By the way, for everybody watching this, like all the safeties have been uh, released. Uh, Jalen, to put in perspective, Jalen Johnson from Chicago just got signed yesterday while we're making this video. Um, so I don't want no no predictions then, but what are expectations for next year? Like, like uh, how many um how many games y'all like that? Just what do you want to? I'm going to be real this season. Last season, I was jumping on Twitter. Yeah, we're going 13 and four. You could fight me about it. Um, this season, this season, I'm going to take everything into consideration. New coaching staff, new players, new everything. We're like the fifth youngest team right now. So my expectation is to really come in and for everybody kind of to be learning everything. Like we have, we still have our veterans, BK. We have met. Um, I was going to say the same person. We have DK as of right now. We have Lockett as of right now. We have Gino as a lock right now. Bobby, like we still have a lot of veteran pieces um, that will play a good and big role. So my expectation is for them to kind of, um, I don't want to say groom these young players, but kind of take them under their wing. I feel like this season, if I'm being realistic, what did I say on my podcast? I know I gave an expectation. I think I said 10 and 7. Sounds about right. Oh. Uh... I don't have my note. I took some notes from that, but I don't have it. I said that sounds perfect though. Yeah, I think I said honestly about 10, 7. But looking at our when I did take a look at our schedule, it was very favorable this year. It's very, it's very, it's very favorable. Um, besides like our divisional games, those are always hit or miss. Um, so we'll see. Um, the one I am gonna say, I hope. My expectation this season, I'm gonna put it out there and they're gonna come for me on Twitter, and you know they're gonna come for me on Twitter and they're gonna fight me. But we got the one man who can stop San Francisco's defense. And everybody who knows Seattle and everybody know who the NFC West know that Seattle and San Francisco got beef for real. And for some reason, this past two seasons, we couldn't we can't get past them. We're like five and oh in the past two seasons with them right now. Well, we got closer to beating them with Drew Locke than we did with Gina. I don't know what that was about, but you know, like for the past two seasons, it just not has been clicking for us but we got our head coach it's not like our defensive coordinator our oc our head coach now is the one man that could stop them um and also stop the rams too so you know like i just feel like so, my expectation is to at least if we don't beat them twice to at least go one and one so that yeah. a divisional record next year for sure is what you're saying oh divisional record divisional record i really have to Stop downplaying the Rams for one. Um, because what you won two games, you said this year in your division, yeah, it was the Cardinals. So, yeah, you got to do better next year, right? I mean, yeah, it was the, the Cardinals were our only division. We were two and six, yeah. So, it was the Cardinals, no, not two and six, we were two out of six. It was the Cardinals. Um, so I expect, this, I expect this to, yeah. Obviously beat the Cardinals twice, so that's two. I hope we go one and one with the Rams. The sweeping us was crazy. I didn't expect that. Um, so for us to obviously step some up there, so that's three, and then one and one with San Fran. So four out of six, yeah, I think is pretty expectation wise divisional. I'm not gonna say first place NFC because San Fran is also coming off of a um a Super Bowl run. And I know they got some fire under their tail because it didn't happen how they wanted it to happen. So they're no matter who it is, I know they're out for something this season. So yeah, those are my expectations to at least be San Fran, not be well, yeah, go one and one, go four out of six in a division, 10, seven for the season. I want us to at least I, I feel like it might be a stretch, but it's not with how the season our schedule is to at least make it into the playoffs, I feel like we still have a pretty good chance. Like, the Seahawks have never not been a playoff team besides last season and when we went 7-10, and 10, I think, before when we when Rus before Russell left, his last year. Um, we haven't made the playoffs. But other than that, we've really made it into the playoffs every year. Um, so I would like to keep that going, honestly. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Nate, I'll give you the floor for the closing. 
let the people know where they can find you. Uh, all yeah. you. Can. I'm gonna put it at the at the bottom at the end, but the floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Um. Honestly, if you guys want to find my goofy tail self, I am on Twitter. Um. Under with two A's right now. It's Nay the Menace. Everybody knows me as Big Nay. Um. The little one with the biggest amount of energy. Um. And I also have a podcast, Twelve Shades of Nay. You guys can find that on Apple and Spotify. I'll always post links on my Twitter. Um. So yeah, just follow me on Twitter. You can have access to that. Or just find it on Apple or Spotify. We're working on different things. Um, right now, I'm an audio-only girl. So if you want to just listen to my voice, that's fine. Um, yeah, other than that, you guys could just chop it up with me on Twitter and any Instagram. Like, anywhere you guys could possibly find me. Um, I won't hide. So, yeah. Well, neighbor, I, I appreciate you. Know, um, Thank you. I'll, the nation. What do you think? Is it Sea Alternation? Is that right? They are, what are we? We're the 12s or 12s. The I think 12. that's it's now. If you want to address Seahawk fans, you address the 12s. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say 12s. <laughs> I appreciate you for coming to represent the 12s. Maybe, you know, before the season, once, you know, training camp and y'all get the draft and all order, we could bring you back up here and. and would be like an early season expectation or something like that. Yeah, definitely. And now I got to get you on my podcast. Hey, look, I'm <laughs> real. Just let me know. I will. I will. So thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me today. So yeah, much appreciated. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Well, y'all, as usual, this is okay, we got time and I'm out. Peace. Here, me. Pittsburgh. Don't cut.